let's solve for all values of a given that 2 to the a plus 4 to the a plus 8 to the a is equal to 39. Well, the left hand side can be simplified into 2 to the a plus 4 is a perfect square, which means it can be written as 2 squared and it is raised to the a. So we have to raise this to the a plus 8 is a perfect cube, which means it can be written as 2 cube and it is raised to the a. This is equal to 39. Now, our next step will be for us to apply the property of indices that says that when I have a to the m, and this is raised to the n, as we have here, this can be written as a to the n or raised to the m. Now, you notice that the position of m and n switch. So we're going to be applying this trick to what we have here and here. So this becomes 2 to the a plus this becomes 2 to the a or raised to the 2 plus this becomes 2 to the a or raised to the 3. This is equal to, now notice that the left hand side is made up of perfect cube, a perfect square, and a number. So we're going to be breaking down 39 into the sum of a perfect cube, perfect square, and a number. The perfect cube we're going to be using for 39 is 27. This is a perfect cube. Plus, now let's add a perfect square to it. Plus 9. 9 is a perfect square. So 27 plus 9 is 36. Now, the remaining number there is 3. That is it. Now, notice that the left-hand side, we have 2 to the a, 2 to the a, 2 to the a. So, we have to introduce substitution. We can just say, let 2 to the a be equal to, you could use any alphabet, let me say k. So, that means the left-hand side can now be written as k plus this becomes k squared, so k squared plus this becomes k cube equal to, now let's write this into, is a perfect cube, which means 3 cube plus 9 is the perfect square, which means 3 squared, then plus 3. Now our next step would be for us to rearrange. I have k from here, so this is a k, which is the number. I'm going to be moving the number to the left hand side so that it becomes minus 3. I'll put this in a parenthesis plus the next one I have k squared. Then when I move this 3 squared to the left, it becomes minus 3 squared. I'll also put this in a parenthesis plus. Now lastly, I have k cube. And when I move 3 cube to the left, it becomes minus 3 cube. I'll also put this in a parenthesis equal to, now nothing is remaining on the right hand side, so I'm go, just going to put zero there. Now notice that we have difference of two squares and we have difference of two cubes. Well, for difference of two squares, we have properties. Let's see when I have a squared minus b squared. This can be written as a minus b times a plus b. Why for difference of two cubes, this has a property. For example, when I have a cube minus b cube, this can be written as a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. And if we have to do a comparison, you notice that our a, if we have to compare our a is k, while our b is this 3 here. Now let's apply this to our original expression. So we have this to be k minus 3 
plus. Now applying the difference of two squares, this can be written as k minus 3 times k plus 3. That's for difference of two squares and then plus. Now applying the difference of two cubes, so we have k minus 3 in this format times k squared plus AB means a multiplication, that means multiplying 3 times k, which gives 3k. And then plus b squared means 3 squared, which gives 9. That is it. And this is equal to 0. Now, from our expression, you notice that k minus 3 is very much common. So we can factor out k minus 3. Now, open a bracket k minus 3 divided by k minus 3 is 1 plus now if we have to divide this expression by k minus 3 you see that k plus 3 will remain so k plus 3 plus if we also have to divide this expression by k minus 3 you see that this will remain which is k squared plus 3k plus 9 and this is equal to 0. Now our next step will be for us to simplify what we have inside of this parenthesis. So we have k minus 3 times, now taking the one with the highest degree, so we have k squared, now plus 3k plus k is 4k and then 1 plus 3 is 4 plus 9 is 13, so plus 13 equal to 0. Now we have two cases that we're going to be solving together. One of the cases is k minus 3, so let me just call that case 1. That is k minus 3 equal to 0. And for the other case, let me call that case 2. Oh, don't worry, I'm going to be writing it under. So for the case 1, which is this equal to 0, we can easily get the value of k by moving this to the left-hand side. And when we do that, we have k to be equal to, as negative 3 crosses to the right, it becomes positive 3. I think this is the only real solution we're going to have. Now to get the other two solutions, we come to our case 2. So let's say this is case 2. Case 2 is k squared plus... 4k plus 13 equal to 0. Now we have a pretty quadratic equation which cannot be factorized. So we're going to be using a quadratic formula. But before I do that, I need to find the discriminants. Discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. And by observation, our a from this quadratic equation is 1, that is the coefficient of k squared. Our b is 4, which is the coefficient of k, while our c is a constant term, which is 13. Now let's substitute that here. So we have the discriminant to be equal to b squared, which means 4 squared, minus, we have 4 times a, a is 1 times c, c is 13. So this simplifies into 4 squared is 16 minus 4 times 1 times 13 is 52. And when we subtract, 16 minus 52 is negative 36. So we're going to be, this is actually lesser than 0, which means it is negative, which means we're going to be having a complex solution here. Now, what is a quadratic equation? The quadratic formula we're going to use, we're looking for k, is k equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of the discriminant all over 2a. Now let's substitute here. So we have k to be equal to negative b. b is 4 plus or minus the square root of the discriminant. The discriminant is negative 36. That's what we got all over 2 times a, which means 2 times 1. Now this can be simplified into negative 4 
plus or minus the square root of now i'll be breaking this down this can be the square root of 36 times negative 1 which gives negative 36 all over 2 times 1 is 2 now we can also separate that so we have k to be negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 36 times the square root of negative 1 hmm. so just to make it simple all over 2 and now we've got our final solution no not just our final solution this is negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 36 is 6 times the square root of negative 1 the square root of negative 1 is i which means iota all over 2 so there are two cases of k from here or two values of k from here now let's separate them so on separation we have k to be equal to we have negative 4 plus 6i all over 2 or we have value of k to be negative 4 now this time choose the negative negative 6i all over 2 actually we can separate this so this is k equal to negative 4 over 2 plus 6i over 2 this in the same vein is negative 4 over 2 we're separating the fraction minus 6i over 2 making our final solutions for k to be negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2 plus 6i divided by 2 is 3i now for this we've got negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2 minus 6i divided by 2 is 3i like i said we've got only one real solution for k which is equal to 3 then we've got two complex solutions which are negative 2 plus 3i and negative 2 minus 3i well feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below and if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video go ahead and give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming in videos and like i always say until next time take care